Hi, Susan Kellner here from the Ontario Pesticide Education Program, and I'm going to go over Chapter 2, Integrated Pest Management. About 20 slides in the presentation, it will take us uh, about 15 minutes to review. I'll just move myself out of the way here. What will I learn? By the end of the lesson, you should be ready to define integrated pest management, describe the components of IPM, identify opportunities for IPM in your cropping system, and list resources where you can find information about IPM for your farming operation. So follow along in the book if you'd like. This is just a quick overview. There's lots more information in that manual chapter than what we'll go through today. IPM is a process of planning and taking steps to prevent and control pests. So IPM includes identification, monitoring, thresholds, pest control methods, and evaluation. You want to know how that program worked. Your IPM program, your plan includes many uh, types of controls, not only pesticides, and depends on your pests that are present, which could be weeds, insects, uh, and or diseases, what you need to control, and the crop experts can help you make an IPM plan. So an IPM program overall, why would you want to use one? So you're looking at uh, your whole agricultural um, cropping system. You want to recognize conditions that could lead to pest problems. You want to prevent pest problems from starting. And once they do start, um, then you need to have an action plan in place for controlling them. And by doing that, you may possibly reduce your pesticide use and therefore reduce environmental and health risks. Also, a big issue in Ontario is pesticide resistance. So there are some pests that uh, will no longer be controlled by um, pesticides, um, so we need to slow that resistance down and prevent pesticide resistance. And you can develop a long-term solutions for managing pests, so it might not be the first or second year, or maybe it takes three or four years to get a certain pest under control. Okay, can IPM reduce your pesticide use? Well, the first question you're going to ask is, is it the right time to apply a pesticide? and uh, monitoring for your pests in your crop will give you an idea um, when you've reached the point where you have to take action to control those pests. Some pests uh, you, you can put up with a, a certain amount of damage or the, the crop can um, go through, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and survive. But um, monitoring is what it will give you um, a chance to identify when you need to use a pesticide. IPM begins with prevention, so the crop management decisions you make can prevent or reduce pest problems, um, seed quality and varieties that you use, uh, maintaining great soil health and plant nutrition, um, providing uh, uh, water and uh, even uh, local climate effects. Um, the moisture, the humidity in the area, they all have an effect on the pests and so um, you need to you know think about that as uh, what can you control, can you keep your crop healthy um, and uh, that will reduce or prevent pest problems. IPM is five components and we outline them in the chapter identification, monitoring, thresholds, methods of control, and evaluation. We're just going to go briefly through each of them quite quickly here. Again, there's more information in your manual chapter. So identification, you need to know which pest is doing that damage. The physical appearance, you may find the pest, but you may just find the damage. Again, learning about the pests that will affect that crop and their life cycle and habits will give you an idea about how to approach um, uh, pest control. Need help? Um, there's lots of help out there with agribusinesses, uh, government, and universities. So government, the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture, Food, and Rural Affairs, and I will short form that as OMAFRA. And there's also the Pest Diagnostic Clinic at the University of Guelph, and they have resources, so you can go to their website for help with Pest ID. But reach out to experts, there's lots out there to help. Um, 
you're identifying pests, but you also should identify the natural enemies. So there are some natural enemies that can keep the pests in your crops in line. And we also call these uh, beneficial insects. So natural enemies would feed on pests of crops and keep pest populations below harmful levels. So there are three types and their definitions are there for you. Predators feeding on pests and live independently of them, but parasitoids live on or in a pest and they kill it in the process of living on them. And entomopathogens are not insects but are bacteria viruses, protozoa, nematodes, or fungi that cause disease in insects. So there are some natural enemies, and if you have enough natural enemies controlling the pests, uh, perhaps uh, other controls aren't needed. New pests, always be aware and keep up to date on the crops you're growing. Um, here's a few examples of new pests in uh, Ontario in, in 2010, the brown marmorated stink bag bug was discovered and first sighted and uh, you can see from the graph here how it's progressed across Ontario. Palmer amaranth is a weed in the United States right now and but it is resistant to at least five modes of action. That's five different kinds of herbicides and if it comes into uh, Canada then it will be a problem already for us. And the box tree moth, um, CFIA confirmed this pest in Toronto in 2018, so another new insect that came into Ontario. So we have to be aware of these uh, new insects as well and keep up to date on what's going on. Monitoring. Part two of integrated pest management, the second component is monitoring. So monitoring, you're regularly inspecting and looking and sampling for pests for the crop. There are many ways of doing that for the different insects. And here we can see a trap, uh, looks like in an apple tree. And here's another trap and it's in front of corn. And so there are specific traps and ways to trap insects for particular crops. So again, you're going to have to go out and search for that information from OMAFRA or from uh, your pest specialist in your area. And they'll tell you what to monitor for, how to monitor for it, how often to go out and look. And you're also maybe wanting to keep accurate records of the weather and what's going on outside as well is that can affect how quickly pests develop and move through a crop so and insects um, and so okay we'll go on to the next slide um, thresholds number three so thresholds is when is control needed so action thresholds. So you're now monitoring, you're getting information on the growth and the infestations of pests through your crop. And then you have to decide is what is the right time to uh, apply the pesticide if you're applying a pesticide. So that you wanna time that when the pests need to be controlled to prevent the unacceptable damage. And the economic injury level, another um, level that you should be aware of, it's the amount of pest damage equaling the cost of controlling the pest, right? So um, it may not pay you to go in and spray or apply a pesticide yet, but it comes to a certain point where you must, uh, or you're going to lose uh, yield and value for that crop completely. So the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs, I'm gonna direct you there to the experts under each crop, and uh, they can uh, provide um, a good background on what uh, action thresholds have been established for many of the pests in many of the commodities in Ontario that we grow. So when the cost of damage could be more than the cost of a control, cost of control, you must take action. And uh, that's where uh, integrated pest management comes in. Here's a example of an action threshold, soybean aphid. So aphids, um, soybean aphids attack the soybean crop, right? And so there's a decision checklist that OMAFRA has. 
And six questions. Have you monitored the field more than once? Has the field reached 250 aphids per plant on 80% of the plants? And that's what your monitoring will tell you. Is the aphid population continuing to increase? Are weather conditions favoring population growth? Is the crop in the R1 to early R6 growth stage? And is the crop under additional stress from other factors? If you can answer yes to all of the above, then the recommendation is apply a pesticide for aphid control. Okay, on to number four, the different methods of control. There are different methods of control and uh, experts divide those into five um, categories or groups. So genetic methods using genetically engineered crops like Bt corn. Uh, cultural methods use good growing practices that stop pests from developing or spreading. So you might be um, using some crop rotation on your farm, um, not continuous cropping. You might use certified seed, which is low in weed seeds. Um, biological methods, again, sometimes we have um, organisms that control a pest or the natural enemies or by beneficials can be released into a crop and uh, this has been used extensively in the greenhouses in Ontario where um, beneficial is insects are contained within the greenhouse and can be introduced and then control the, um, the pests. Physical methods Remove pests or prevent them from entering the crop with screens, mulches, cultivation of fields to remove the weeds. Chemical methods, you would use pesticides to control the pest. Okay, having a plan in place, you execute your plan and then you review the records and your results. What pests did you have? Was your IPM program effective in controlling them? Uh, do you think you went out and monitored the, uh, the crop as frequently as you should? Uh, and so it, would you have to modif modify that plan? And so you can review that with the pest specialists in your area. So IBM is an ongoing process and you want to get the latest news. You can uh, go to attend meetings and field days put on by the crop specialists and also check uh, the internet online for news on all the, the um, crops and here we have Sprayers 101 and uh, that looks at application technology and, and getting that pesticide to the crop accurately and effectively. Uh, field crop news on vegetables is one for vegetables and there's lots available in Ontario from our crop specialists. So take advantage of that information. The toll-free number in to the um, Agriculture Information Contact Centre in Ontario from OMAFRA is 1-877-424-1300 and also there's a number for the Northern Regional Office. And lots of apps are being developed, Pest Manager, Bug Finder, Aphid Advisor, um, new apps are always being developed. Again, your crop specialist is a place to go to find out about that. So that was a background on integrated pest management. Uh, many of you are, are far better experts than me in this, so that was just an overview of what it is. Thanks.